nothing says that these petitions cannot be concluded in seven days. Nothing also says that the Supreme Court must use up the entire 60 days, two months before it decides the appeal. In fact, to underscore the exigency, the Constitution went further in Section 285, Subsection 8, to say that in order to expedite, nothing warrants even the tribunal to give reasons for his judgment. In other words, the tribunal can simply say, this is our judgment, we'll give you reasons later. A lot of Nigerians have no other option than to believe in the judiciary. They believe that the judiciary will do our work and finalize this contention on who won the election. That is Peter Obi, Nepal Party presidential candidate, who said he won the election and INEC should prove the process in which Bola Metinubu the president-elect was declared the winner. Now, there have been a lot of controversies surrounding Bola Metinubu's win and also uh, PDP, on the other hand, Atiku Abubakar also sent in lawyers to fight this to finish. But the problem that a lot of people are seeing is this issue of time frame. Time frame. Will the Tribunal finalized who won the election before the swearing, which is coming in some couple of weeks. Now, is this supposed to be done swiftly or not? I am very sure that a lot of people believe that this should be done swiftly. At least 30 days should be enough. But then there is a lot of burden because of the manner at which elections are carried out in Nigeria. It is intentionally made that way so that it will become a humongous task when issues like this come up. This is not the first time that issues of um, who won the election, who did not win the election and all of that in states in Nigeria. Now it is a presidential election and we are all focused on it. People want justice. Whoever it is that won the election should be announced the winner. Now, Nigerians have come to realize that it is not election only that uh, gives or that will prove who won. You can always take your case to the court if you feel and you believe that um, you know, some discrepancies or some one or some group of people have robbed you of what you believe you won. Now, a lawyer decided to break this down and it is still the same thing that Femi Falano said. He talked about time frame which is very important let us hear what he has to say and don't forget to like and share don't forget to subscribe to this channel let's get right into it you would have started being counted from the time the petitions were filed because oh. that's yeah that's when the work of the tribunal was activated don't forget this is not the first time the tribunal is sitting hearing is only commencing today most pre-hearings had gone on last month of april if you remember there was an objection by the APC that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, P2B, was not even qualified to have, you know, contested the election have an issue. That application has already been taken and dismissed by this petition tribunal, for your information. So that tells you that the tribunal is already working, had taken some applications already. Mm. You know, some house, you know, keeping and house clearing job has already been done. What we expect the tribunal to do today is to go into substantive hearing of the petition. But they call it a pre-hearing sitting. Well, I wonder if, why they called it so. Maybe journalists may have seen it from that angle, just like I'm telling you now. If I wasn't telling you that the tribunal has already started sitting and has already taken some decisions, perhaps not every Nigerian would have known that. Mm. The, 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 the concern, however, people seem to have is on the entire modus operandi of the tribunal. And the issue you just raised in your intro about the time within which the tribunal should go about its job and the effect it will have on the polity. And I'm sure you would have been referring to section 285, subsection 6 and 7 of the Constitution. And that section talks about giving the first tribunal, which is the Court of Appeal, 180 days within which to conclude its hearing and determination of the appeal. While section 285 subsection 7 
now subsequently give the Supreme Court, which is the final court on this matter, 60 days, two months, within which to hear and determine the appeal from the election petition tribunal. Now, uh, uh, many people have misconstrued this to indicate that the tribunal must spend 180 days. If you read that section, nothing in that section says or even suggests that. The only thing that section seems to say is to impress on members of the tribunal the need for expedition, for speed, in view of the sensitive and peculiar nature of election petitions, that they must not exceed 180 days. But there's nothing there that says they must wait for 180 days. No. And they must use it all up. Or they must use it all up. Nothing says that these petitions cannot be concluded in seven days. Nothing also says that the Supreme Court must use up the entire 60 days, two months before it decides the appeal. Now, you can see that majority of the discussion borders on time frame. Time frame. Yes, time frame. Although people are not, um, you know, talking more about evidences, which is very important because fast tracking without the court, you know, judiciously coming up with, you know, the, the final judgment. Don't forget that the court could also, you know, um, look and say, oh, based on technical grounds, this and that and that. But then it will be out there for everybody to see. And of course, the, the lawyers, senior advocates of different parties that are represented there will also do what they need to do. They will also present themselves. And uh, I think it's high time that we do the right. Let us hear more. In fact, to underscore the exigency, the Constitution went further in Section 285, Subsection 8, to say that in order to expedite, nothing warrants even the tribunal to give reasons for his judgment. In other words, the tribunal can simply say, this is our judgment, we'll give you reasons later, just to ensure that this thing is expedited. That's what Section 285, Subsection 8 says. That underscores it. And that's why most Nigerians, like uh, someone like uh, a president of the NBA, uh, Dr. Oli Sabakoba had been clamoring for some radical proactivity by the, by the tribunal because this petition, the way it is structured, is such that it can, in my opinion, be disposed of in seven days, maximum 14 days. If you give me time, I'll tell you how it can be done. Uh -huh. For example, the um, candidates have four major grounds for their petitions. I'm talking about the two major candidates. There may be other candidates, you know, but the Labour Party, the PDP, and their presidential candidates have filed petitions. And, for example, and their petitions are similar. The summary of it, which is, they are challenging the declaration of the APC candidate as president-elect on one major ground, that the constitutional requirement for that declaration was not met at all, and therefore INEC ought not to have made that return. They feel very strong about it, whether rightly or wrongly. And they hint that on section 134, subsection 2, A and B of the Constitution, which says that for you to be declared the president-elect, where there are more than two candidates, you must have scored 25% uh, of two thirds of the votes in two thirds of the states of the federation and the federal capital territory. And they said, whatever you scored, if you did not score 25% of votes in the federal capital territory, you should not be declared president-elect. Now, they have their reasons. The other parties feel, no, it doesn't. It's wrong in law. They cited many cases, you know. And the other people, too, have the argument. They say, well, how can you say you must get 25% of FCT? If you get 25% of about 30 states, why should FCT be the decider? The other side of people are saying, no, you must interpret the law the way it is. We lawyers have various modes of interpretation. We have the golden rule, the use them generous rule, and all the other rules. But the basic is the literal rule. Where the law is literally clear, don't add anything to it. And the law says you must have two tests of, you know, this two tests, 25% of two tests, and, and means conjunction, and means plus, and means including, and means together with. And they now raise the argument that what if Wayek said, uh, the university said you must get English and maths before you are admitted to read medicine. Mm. And you now get eight mm. other credits, ten credits, but you lack English, you lack medicine. Would they admit you? The answer is no. So if that's what the law says, that can be decided by the tribunal. It doesn't need 180 days. You can call the lawyers because the result for FCT is on the table. INEC has the certified result. It's on the it's on it's, it's online. If this party did not make 25%, come, all councils, come and address us. The 
tribunal can invite the parties. Come and address us one one day or two two hours. Does this lack of 25% is it fatal or it's not? And after addressing, the tribunal can adjourn to the next day and give his decision and even tell you that I will give you reason later. That's what section 285 sub 8 empowers them to do. Now, if that fails and does not disqualify the APC candidate, you can go to the next one, which is the grounds of the opposition under section 115 of the Electoral Act, which forbids double nomination. Section 115D specifically forbids a candidate from taking nomination forms and filling nomination forms for, for two elective positions. It even went further to criminalize that misadventure in section 115 subsection K, Y 1K, by saying that the person will even be sentenced to two years imprisonment if you are found to have filled two nominations. Now, the opposition parties allege that the vice presidential candidate of the APC filled two nomination forms for both Senate and vice president. Now, they are saying that that is fatal, considering the clear, unambiguous provisions of Section 115 of the Electoral Act. The matter is before the court. So we cannot conclude that this person is right or that person is right. But it is something that the tribunal can ventilate and deal with in one day. Address me for two hours. The forms are there. Certified through copies can be procured from INEC. Address us that by, by law, should this candidate be disqualified? Because if the vice president is disqualified, automatically it will affect the presidential candidate, like what happened in Bayelsa, where the deputy governorship candidate was disqualified for you know, incongruities and uh, issues of forgery. Automatically, that was what affected Leon, who was the APC governorship candidate, who was already conducting his parade for swearing in the next day, and the Supreme Court judgment came, and that was it. PDP became the governorship, uh, you know, the, became in charge of governor of Bayelsa State. That exactly is what will happen, because it's a joint ticket. Once one is affected, it affects the other. The, if they if, go for that. If they go for that. And that does not require seven days. Because it does not require calling of witnesses. It requires getting the certified through copies and the parties addressing the court on what the law says on that. Now, assuming you scale that second hurdle, there is the third hurdle, the issue of the non forfeiture uh, non-committal non forfeiture that will happen in the United States of America for $460,000. Was it fatal? Is it such that falls within the contemplation of our constitution that any person so convicted or so found guilty for anything money laundering, blah, 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 should not aspire or should not be validly elected as our president? That, again, is subjudice. I can't stay here now and, dis and say this is what this is the correct argument or the, the other one. But the parties are strongly contesting that that is an issue. If it is so, it doesn't also require you to call witnesses from the 774 local government. No. All you need to do is someone whoever can give you certified through copy of that judgment, which you're already seeing online. That is Peter O.P. in court today. Yes, it's a big Monday, a big Monday. That is what it is. But OB is not relenting, APC is not relenting, and even PDP is not also relenting. I'm talking about Atiku Abubakar. Every one of them is dragging INEC, and also they want the court to investigate how INEC came to their conclusion. And what is this conclusion that Bola Ahmed Tumbu, the president-elect, that is about to be sworn in on May 29th, um, how did he, I'm talking about some couple of weeks now, Bola Metunubu would be president of Nigeria. The aggrieved parties want to find out how did you come about this result, but, you know, it's a daunting task. Why? Not because it should be. I do understand that they have to investigate, they have to collate, they have to get, um, you know, data from... INEC, and they have to be also sure that these data are not uh, manipulated or adulterated. They have to get all of this, and it takes time to do all of this because of the will to do it. Now, if this election was conducted exactly how INEC promised, even though the constitution surrounding INEC's um, action, um, people are beginning to look into it because it is not by force that INEC will have to. It's just a gentleman agreement, which can be um you know changed at any time that's what people need to understand but uh, my neck said we will be conducting this election everything will be done electric electronically and people felt good about it they felt confident they said okay this time around we'll be getting what we um uh, what we want 
Coupled with the change of Naira notes and all of that, people felt like, wow, this is a great move. But unfortunately, it did not end up to be what people wanted. Why? Because Labour Party claimed they won the election, but APC was declared the winner. How true this is, we are yet to find out as the case is in court. As you can see, loads of lawyers and, um, you know, political analysts and all of that. Everyone stormed the court. Everybody stormed the court. It's a big day. It's a big one. They want to find out who won this election, on what grounds, what process. Every of these things need to be presented out. Now, so it won't be that um, we are just talking, 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 talking. There is something that we need to find out. There is something that we need to take note of. I spoke about this in the previous um, video where Femi Falano spoke about the process and talked about how Kenya had a special court called the Constitutional Court where cases are looked into in 14 days. In 14 days, everybody's um, you know anger, everybody's complaint will be put to rest if cases are presented if... Um, you know, because it takes, you know, the, you first need to investigate INEC. You need to investigate parties claiming that they won and all of that. A lot of investigation needs to be done. But I think this could be done in 60 days or let's say in 30 days. And that is what I'm talking about. If it could be fast-tracked, if it could be done as it should be done, we'll have results. But then there will be still arguments. Yes, there will be arguments because of the electronic issue. That's around said. We heard cases where they said that certain people were forced to, um, you know, to, to impute certain things in the bivas, in the IREV, and all of that. We heard all of those stories.